This is a solution to the 2013 exam paper uh, question 3. So this is the um, question. Okay, so I'm assuming you've got access to this. So we have the one dimensional shallow water equations. Um, and we could write this in quasi linear form where we need this J matrix, which is the Jacobian. And we've got to find the Jacobian. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do to start with. Okay, so um, from the shallow water equation, oh, well, actually, I'm going to start off with defining the Jacobian. So the Jacobian is, okay, so this is a 2 by 2 matrix. Okay, so we have the partial derivative of F1 um, with respect to U1 and the partial derivative of F1 with respect to U2. Okay, on the top. And on bottom we have the partial derivative of F2 with respect to U1 and the partial derivative of F2 with respect to U2. Now this is something I'd advise you to sort of memorise. Okay, it is uh, it is possible to um, sort of derive it uh, given um, some information, but I'd advise you to memorise that. Okay, so from the shallow water equations, okay, we know that the U vector is H and HU. So these are our conserved variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, U1 is H, U2 is HU, and the F vector, the flux vector, is HU, and HU squared plus one half GH squared. Now this is straight from the uh, question here, so these are given. What I can do here, well th this is F1 and F2, now I can write this in terms of u1 and u2. So hu is f1, but it's also equal to u2. So I'm going to write that as u2. Now f2 is hu squared. Now if I square u2, I get h squared u squared. But I want hu squared, so I'm going to divide that by h. So I'm going to divide by u1 which is, of course, u to the power minus 1. OK, plus 1 half g h squared, and that's simply u1. OK, so now I calculate the uh, partial derivatives. So the partial derivative of f1 with respect to u1 OK, is a partial derivative of u2 with respect to u1, and that is, of course, 0. Partial derivative of F1 with respect to U2. Okay, so in this case we've got partial derivative of U2 with respect to U2, which is of course 1. Okay, uh, we do the same for F2. So F2 is U2 squared U1 to the power minus 1 plus 1 half GH U1 squared. Okay, so with respect to u1, okay, so I'm going to have minus u2 squared u1 to the power minus 2, and we'll have plus g u1. Okay, well, this is an equal, well, u2 squared will be h squared u squared divided by h squared, just give me minus u squared, and u1 is, of course, h. Okay, and the final one is partial derivative of F2 with respect to U2. So similar, except for this time we're differentiating with respect to U2, not U1. So here we're going to have 2U2 multiplied by U1 to the power minus 1, and this second term is just going to be 0. Okay, so I've got two lots of U2. Okay, now u2 is hu, so we've got 2 hu, but then we're dividing by h. Okay, so we'll just have 2u. Okay, so therefore, if we put it all together, the Jacobian is 0, 1, uh, gh minus u squared, and 2u. And that's the uh, solution to question 1. Question, uh, well, part one. Part two is find the two eigenvalues. Okay, so that was part one. Okay, so we 
let's turn over the page. 3A part 2. Okay, well, just to remind us what the Jacobian was. So it was 0, 1, uh, u squared minus g, oops, oh, minus g, h, yes, minus u squared plus g, h, and, oops, totally forgot it, to u. Okay, now eigenvalues, sat it, so the eigenvalues, it says satisfy, okay, the determinant of j minus lambda, which is our eigenvalues, times the identity matrix, equals zero. Okay, standard definition of eigenvalues. So therefore, we've got zero times the determinant of minus lambda, one, g h minus u squared, and two u minus lambda. Okay, so two by two determinant, so what we've we got, we've got minus lambda times minus lambda, lambda squared, minus 2u lambda, minus, or oh, minus minus u squared, minus 2gh. Okay, so here we have a quadratic, so solve it using the quadratic formula. So minus b, so it's 2u plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's going to be 4u squared, minus 4 times 1, times u squared, plus 4gh all over 2 okay so okay so 2u divided by 2 is u plus or minus now the 4u squares cancel out and we're just left with 4gh but 4 can come outside of the square root so we have 2 but 2 over 2 so we've just got root gh Okay, so uh, show that the system is hyperbolic. Well, a system is hyperbolic when the eigenvalues are real and distinct. Now, since since g h is always going to be greater than or equal to zero, uh, lambda uh, it, lambda is going to be real. Okay, so lambda is going to be real um, and distinct. So this implies that shallow water equations are hyperbolic. Okay. Right, so that's question A done. Part B, hand calculation on to verify a 1D shallow water solver. Um, got a computational domain of 12 meters with five grid points used, and uh, therefore delta x is three meters. So water depth is four meters uh, for the first six meters, and then two meters thereafter. So given local wave speeds, uh, these are the eigenvalues of the Jacobian. So it sort of gives you a hint for the uh, part A there. Uh, write down an expression for the maximum allowable time step. Okay, so what we have. So maximum allowable time step is going to be delta t is equal to well. We're going to have to find the minimum over all of our nodes. So the minimum of i. Okay, then we have delta x divided by. Now the wave speeds. We have a fastest and slowest. What we've got to determine is what's the maximum absolute um, wave speed. So the maximum of u, uh, the absolute value of u plus g, root gh, or u minus square root gh. Because we could have a sort of a, you know, we're looking at the absolute value. Okay, so that's the expression for the um, maximum allowable time step. Okay, and finally, part two. Okay, perform a single uh, time step using the scheme given here. It looks like an upwind scheme. Okay, so I'm going to start by just writing out the x values. I'm going to write out a table of x values. So we're starting off at 0, 3, 6, 9 and 12. There are five nodes. Okay, so the initial conserved variable vector and the initial velocity is 0 and we have a height of 6 for the first 6 meters. So these three 
are all going to be um, six and two meters thereafter. So that's going to be two. Okay, and I could. That's the first. That's the initial condition. I could also determine what the uh, flux vector is. So flux vectors is h times u, which is that value. Um, h u squared, which is going to be zero plus a half g h squared. So um, h is thirty six. Well, h squared. Oh, water depth is four, not six. Okay. Just made a mistake on and two after. So four squared is sixteen divided by two gives me eight. Eight g for the first three nodes. And two squared is four divided by two is two, so it's going to give me two g for those nodes there. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do now is calculate the maximum allowable time step. Okay, so. From before, okay, it's going to be. Uh, well, I'm going to use one of these because this is going to have us give us a smaller value for the um, uh, velocity. So it's going to be the minimum. Uh, actually, I don't need the minimum. It's going to be delta x over max u plus root g h and u minus root g h. Now delta x is 3, um, so we've got a maximum of, well, the u is 0, and then it's going to be plus root g h. So it's going to be either plus um, g h, so that's going to be f plus 4g, or minus 4g, which is pretty much the same. Remember these are magnitudes. Okay, so that's essentially 3 over 2 root g is our maximum allowable time step. Okay, so now if we have a look at the scheme, so the scheme is, okay, it looks like an upwind scheme to me, so just going to write it out again. Minus Delta T over delta X. Now delta T has just been determined. So that's three over two root G uh, over delta X. But because delta X is three, I'm just going to have one over two root G, and this is multiplied by the flux of the I node minus flux for the I minus one. Okay, that's our scheme. So. If we have a look at the uh, u0 to start with, it's going to be u0, uh, the original value, 1 over 2 root g. Okay, and we're going to have f of u0 minus f of u minus 1. This is going to be a ghost node. Okay, now our boundary conditions from the question seems zero gradient so instead of u minus one this will be u one so so u zero is four zero minus one over two root g okay and then i got the flux for u zero is zero and eight g the flux for u one is also zero and eight g so you can see these two subtract each other it's just going to be zero so there's no change for u0. Okay, and we just do the same for all the others. You don't really need to actually write out what I'm doing here, but it can help um, just to make sure uh, we're getting things right. Keep forgetting the two. So again, f of u1, so this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, f of u1 is 0, 8g, and f of u0 is 0, 8g again, so like the first one there's no change, maybe 4 over 0, okay, uh, 
two, one. Oh, are we going to have 4 or 0? Uh, yes we are. Let's do 0, 2, root G. Okay, and it's going to be the same as the previous two. So the first three, there's no change because it pretty much got flat water. Okay, and the next one, this is the one where we're going to have some flux, some change in the flux. Okay, so this time U3 is 2, 0, minus 2, zero, 2 root G. Now F of U3 is 0 over 2G, and F of U2 is 0 and 8G. So we are going to have some change here. So we're going to have minus 6, so we're going to have over minus 6G, okay, uh, but times by a half, so that's 1 over 12. Uh, G. Uh, so, so this would be minus six times two. Okay, so what we're going to have here two is going to remain unchanged on the top. Then I'm going to have zero minus. That's going to be multiplied by a minus. That's going to be um, plus. So it's going to be one over. Uh, 12 and uh, G root G and uh, can simplify that a bit okay so what have I got it's got G to 3 over 2 oh no I'm going to leave it at that and finally the last one U4 1 equals U for the initial value over dt over dx f u four zero minus f of u three zero. Now in this case, the fluxes are the same, so this one's going to remain unchanged. So we've got zero and two g minus zero and two g. Okay, so that's just going to be two zero. Okay, so that's the uh, first. Um, that's the first uh, step of that scheme.